Hey YouTube, Apple iDev here with the third tutorial in our series on uh, developing for the Mac. Um, first of all, thank you guys for being so supportive. Even though I only have about two dozen views, I already have two followers after only two tutorials, and they were pretty basic and simple tutorials. So hopefully this is a good sign for the future, and my numbers will keep growing. Having said that, we're going to uh, continue with our third tutorial today, which is actually going to be something I talked about in the uh, second video. Actually, I don't remember if I talked about it at all, um, but it's called key equivalence. And what a key equivalent is, is if you open up, let's just say, Finder window, and you tap something and you hit enter, and you see how it activates that uh, bar here, that's what a key equivalent is. Essentially, a key equivalent is a keyboard shortcut, and you don't really think about that that often. If you use space or enter to select a button on a web page or in an application, you know, you don't really think about that. You use tab to move in between things, stuff like that. But you don't actually think about that, and you don't actually think about how they're set up. So today I'm going to show you how to do that in Xcode in the application that we built. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Xcode here. Um, and while we wait for it to load... Alright, so here's what I'm going to show you guys. Normally, in an application... Um, I mean, first, first I'm going to show you the one I have built. Um, and this one's actually also going to have something that we're not going to cover until our... Uh, it should be in the next tutorial. But, um, and that thing is this window, which you don't need to worry about. But what you see is I can press the Enter key or the Tab key, and it will change the window. Um, however, if I run the one from the tutorial that we've been building... Um, once it builds up and loads here. Oh, computer's frozen up here. Hold on a sec. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to... Oh, oh, there we go. Let's try this one more time. There we go. All right. So on this one that we've been doing, you see if I click enter or tap, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't click a button. It doesn't actually perform any actions. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. Um, because this is all code, uh, you're not going to have to worry about your interface builder. You're just going to be looking at your um, Xcode. You're going to be looking at your appdelegate.m file, your implementation file. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to set the, the key equivalent and or actually, sorry, the first thing we have to do is um, we, we are going to have to deal with our uh, nib file for a second here. And the reason this is, is because we've already created, um, you're going to want to open up your assistant editor. We've already created actions for button one and button two, but what we haven't done is we haven't created an outlet for them. We haven't created a property like we have for our window and our text field. So we can do something when the button is clicked, but we can't actually do anything to the buttons. So what we're going to do here is we're going to control drag from button one and button two. We're going to create outlets for them now. And I'm just going to call this B1 for button one. And I'm going to do the same thing for button two. So now what we have is we have two uh, outlets in properties. So what this allows us to do is it now allows us to access the buttons and change the properties of the buttons. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually save our interface builder document since we've created new connections and we're going to go to our .m file, our implementation file. And you can see it's actually now synthesized two new properties. It's synthesized our button one and our button two. And again, just like before, created dedicated instance variables for us. Thank you, Xcode. So now what we have to do is we're going to really just write two lines of code in the uh, application did finish launching and that's going to set the key equivalents. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type a um, bracket underscore b1, which is the name of our variable for our first button. And we're just going to say set key equivalent at quotation mark, which is how you start off a string in Objective-C. And we're going to type backslash r, uh, close quotation mark, bracket, semicolon. What the backslash r does is, in Unicode, there um, it's the backslash is essentially called an escape character. And what it does is it tells the compiler that something special is coming up and you need to do something special with the character following. So the escape character backslash r is the escape character for the return button. And because there's no literal for a return button, you know, if you're trying to make it the i key, we would just type 
I, but instead we're going to type backslash R for return. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing for button 2, although for button 2, um, when we type set key equivalent, we're going to make this, uh, we'll make it tab. So in order to do tab, you're going to do backslash T, which is again the escape character in Unicode for the tab button. And actually, that's about half of the code we're going to have to do. That sets the key equivalents and lets the program know that those two keys are going to have to uh, do an action of some sort. The problem is, we haven't actually told the application what to do, or, or whether or not it should do this, and what it should do when something, when one of these buttons is pressed that was worded really poorly. But essentially what happens is right now, the computer knows that these two buttons, the return button and the tab button, correspond to button one and button two, but it doesn't know when to actually listen for those. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a method for that. Um, and this method is going to be sort of a listener. If you ever coded in Java, they call them listeners. We're going to do the same thing here. So for a method in Objective-C, we're going to type hyphen space, parentheses bool in all caps, and we're going to type uh, perform key equivalent, equivalent, if I can spell, and then we're going to say colon parentheses, which is how you do a parameter. We're going to say ns event, space asterisk parentheses, and we'll just call it the event. And then we're going to do a curly brace, hit enter, and you see it creates the second curly brace. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just write a couple of if statements to tell the computer that, yes, when buttons are pressed, something needs to happen, but only if two certain buttons are pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, space parentheses, the event, which is the event that was passed to the method, dot key, so that means it's looking for a key on the keyboard, equals equals underscore b1, so it's telling we're telling it to look to button 1, and we're just going to type key equivalent, which means it's going to look for the key equivalent that we set in the application did finish launching method. And if that is true, we're just going to say return yes. And we want to do the same thing for button two. So now you can see it's only going to perform a key equivalent, or it's only now it essentially knows that it has to perform a key equivalent if we um, if the enter or tab button is pressed because that's what these two statements up here mean. So now what we have to do just to uh, satisfy the compiler here and make sure that it always is going to return something, we want it to return no. We don't want it to perform a key equivalent whenever there is a key pressed on the keyboard or really whenever there is anything done that is not want pressing one of those two keys. So, now that we've actually done that, that, I believe, is all we have to do. Yeah, it is. Um, there is nothing else we have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to save our .m file, and we're going to run the application. And you saw before when we pressed buttons, when we pressed enter and tab, it wouldn't do anything. But now you're going to see something interesting. And it's something we didn't have before, but now you see that this button is highlighted. When you set a key equivalent as the return button, it, um, it, it essentially knows... That, that's the one you want to highlight, and that's when you see windows all over, pop-ups. When there's already a button highlighted, when the pop-up comes up, that's what it is. That means you set a, a key equivalent as the return button. So, as you watch, if we press return, now it's button 1. Um, and similarly, if we press tab, just like we told it to, now it says button 2 has been clicked. And you can switch back and forth as fast as you can, but you'll notice we can also still click on the buttons as usual. So, that's just the... Um, Essentially, the first part of this uh, button control, um, the next tutorial that I'm going to show you is going to be how to use those to manipulate other windows, um, which is something I talked about earlier. So stick around. I'll post, this, I'll post that tutorial in just a few minutes. Uh, if you like these, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.